The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. So as we stand, let us pray. God of wonder and God of joy, grace comes from you, and you alone are the source of life and love. Without you, we cannot please you. Without your love, our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, that we may worship you now with thankful hearts and serve you always with willing minds. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the presence of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we have come together this afternoon to witness the marriage of John and Helen. We've come to pray for God's blessing on them, to share their joy and to celebrate their love. For marriage is a gift of God in creation through which husband and wife may know the grace of God. It is given that as man and woman grow together in love and trust, they shall be united with one another in heart, body and mind, as Christ is united with his bride, the church. The gift of marriage brings husband and wife together in the delight and tenderness of sexual union and joyful commitment to the end of their lives. It is given as the foundation of family life in which children are born and nurtured and in which each member of the family in good times and in bad may find strength, companionship and comfort and grow to maturity in love. Marriage is a way of life made holy by God and blessed by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ with those celebrating a wedding at Cana of Galilee. Marriage is a sign of unity and loyalty which all should uphold and honour. It enriches society and strengthens community. No one should enter into it lightly or selfishly but reverently and responsibly in the sight of Almighty God. Helen and John are now to enter this way of life. They will each give their consent to the other and make solemn vows. And in token of this, they will each give and receive a ring. We pray with them that the Holy Spirit will guide and strengthen them, that they may fulfil God's purposes for the whole of their earthly life together. But first, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why these persons may not lawfully marry to declare it now. Helen and John, the vows you are about to take are to be made in the presence of God, who is judge of all and knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, therefore if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. John, will you take Helen to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honour and protect her? And forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Helen, will you take John to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. Will you, the families and friends of Helen and John, support and uphold them in their marriage, now and in the years to come? We will. 
It's a bit half-hearted. <laughs> Will you, the families and friends of Helen and John, support and uphold them in their marriage, now and in the years to come? We will. It's better. <laughs> so let us pray. God our Father, from the beginning you have blessed creation with abundant life. Pour out your blessings upon John and Helen, that they may be joined in mutual love and companionship, and in holiness and commitment to each other. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 So, please sit for the readings. Our first reading comes from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. So brothers and sisters in Christ, you really won't need me to tell you that the theme of today's reading is love. St Paul, writing to his audience in Corinth, writes about the way in which their lives and relationships are in essence worthless if they are not dominated by love. Helen and John, today you take your relationship, the love that exists between you, a step further, as you enter into a way of life blessed by God and to be lived together as husband and wife. A life of mutual love and support, where together you will stand strong against the difficult things the world has an unfortunate habit of throwing at you. The declarations that you have made and the vows you will shortly take show to the world that you have freely entered into a lifelong partnership that is dominated by love. Now much of what we see in the cinema and hear in songs about love is contaminated. It's contaminated with self-interest. Love is not so much what I give to the other person, but often simply, what can I get out of the relationship? But not today. Today, in the coming together of Helen and John at their wedding, we see a rare thing in our world. Love that is completely selfless. Two people who are willing to publicly give themselves to each other, for richer and poorer in sickness and in health, as long as they both shall live. A partnership of mind, body and spirit between a man and a woman that shines out into a world that is, as we all know, desperately short of love. Theirs is the sort of love that promises, I will always be there for you, to care for you, to love and to stand with you until death do us part. Now Jesus, who is spiritually here with us today, demonstrated that kind of love for us. He showed us a sacrificial love. And like him, so a husband and wife must be prepared to give their all for each other. The love that you share is also a purifying love. 
So just as Christ sought to make us a people purified and lifted from sin, so the love that exists in marriage should be pure and uplifting, never confining or deceitful. Yours is a caring love. Just as Christ continues to care for us, so a loving husband cares for his wife and she for him. Care that is freely given, not a selfish love or a love that's extracted or expected, but a love that is freely given, just as Christ's love and care for all his people is freely given to all. And of course your love is unbreakable, just as Christ's love for us and for his church is unbreakable. So the bond you have entered into today, symbolised by your rings, is unbreakable and indissoluble, lasting until the end of time itself. Now Helen and John have come here today to show that love for one another, not just for today, but in a lifelong commitment to each other, made before God, and in front of all of you as witnesses to the act of Christian marriage. But it isn't all done to them. You may not have realised it when you accepted the invitation to this wedding, but you all have a job to do. You have an important job, because none of us are here simply because we've been invited to just another wedding. We're all here to offer our support with our love and our prayers in what John and Helen do in this very public ceremony. Now I hope and pray that this is a truly memorable and happy day for us all, that John and Helen will be truly blessed in recognising our Lord's presence in their life, especially in their future homes, and that their lives may be enriched by his grace in what we all share today. Now, by our presence and public witness, we have thus far all supported John and Helen, but now let's prepare ourselves to commend them their new marriage and their future together to God's grace as we come to the marriage ceremony itself. So if I invite you to come back to the middle, if you'd like to reclaim your daughter. <laughs> Best man, if you'd like to take up your, uh, your place. Okay. Helen and John, oh hang on. Who gives this woman to be married <laughs> to this man? I do. Give me a hand. Do a hand. Helen and John, I now invite you to join hands and make your vows in the presence of God and his people. I, John, take you, Helen. I, John, take you, Helen. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Let go. Pick his hand up in exactly the same way. Okay, say after me. I, Helen, take you, John. I, Helen, take you, John. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death us do part. Till death us do part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. In the presence of God. In the presence of God. I make this vow. I make this vow. Let go. <laughs> Rings. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to John and Helen a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of their vow and covenant which they have made this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Off we down. Okay, say after me. Helen, I give you this ring. Helen, I give you this ring. 
as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John, I give you this ring. John, I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God and before this congregation, John and Helen have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining hands and giving of receiving of rings. I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no one put asunder. And now you may kiss the bride. Okay. <laughs> Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for you have created joy and gladness, pleasure and delight, love, peace and fellowship. Pour out the abundance of your blessing upon Helen and, Helen and John in their new life together. Let their love for each other be a seal upon their hearts and a crown upon their heads. Bless them in their work and in their companionship. Awake and asleep. In joy and in sorrow. In life and in death. Finally, in your mercy, bring them to that banquet where your saints feast forever in your heavenly home. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully grant you the riches of his grace, that you may please him both in body and soul, and living together in faith and love, may receive the blessings of eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Faithful God, holy and eternal source of life and spring of love, we thank and praise you for bringing Helen and John to this day, and we pray for them. May their marriage be life-giving and lifelong, enriched by your presence and strengthened by your grace. May they bring comfort and confidence to each other in faithfulness and trust. May the hospitality of their home bring refreshment and joy to all around them. And we hold before you all those family members and friends who are unable to be here to partake of that hospitality this day. May Helen and John's love for each other also overflow to neighbours in need and embrace all of those in distress. May they discern in your word order and purpose for their lives. And may the power of your Holy Spirit lead them in truth and defend them in adversity. May they nurture their family with devotion, see any children grow in body, mind and spirit, and come at last to the end of their lives with hearts content and in joyful anticipation of heaven. So now let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now may God the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. 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 So, please be upstanding to greet the bride and groom.